In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own Winter Soldier arm. Now granted, you need a 3D printer and a lot of patience, but I'm going to show you how I scale my 3D prints to get them to fit me perfectly. This is not an exact science, and really it comes with a lot of trial and error, and that's where the patience comes in. And I think the Winter Soldier is a perfect project to talk about scaling because I don't have Winter Soldier sized arms, so scaling can be tricky. I do sometimes like to use a simple tape measure just to do some of the long measurements quickly. However, However, it's not going to be very accurate. I can highly recommend digital calipers. This bad boy is going to be the most accurate and it's probably one of my favorite tools. I will also be using my phone to 3D scan my arm with the polycam application. Just use control left click to measure point to point in Blender to compare measurements. So the most important measurement is going to be this. What is the smallest hole I can get my entire hand through? This is getting weird. Just bear with me. And the Winter Soldier arm model does have a portion that comes out, which does make it easier to actually fit your hand through, but it's still a tight squeeze. I didn't want to change the proportions of the models, so this measurement dictated the rest of the scale. I like to keep it simple, use Polycam, 3D scan my arm with a video, export the models to Blender, and then compare those models to the DO3D models to decide on my final scale. Let's 3D scan. Without changing the proportions, I ended up printing all of the pieces at 101% scale. These pieces just barely fit on my Bamboo Lab P1P and cost roughly $10 worth of material in four days worth of back-to-back -back printing. At 101% scale, I could still not fit my hand through the forearm piece. It was still close enough for me to just pull out my Dremel and remove some material. Instead of reprinting, I'll just have to figure out a different way to connect this extra forearm piece. This extra material takes up a lot of space and it just holds magnets in place. I did have to remove a lot of material, but it should fit this time. <laughs> nice. That should work. Good. Oh. It's time to sand, fill, and prime. If you want to see a more detailed look at how I do this, check out one of my other videos because I go over it like a thousand times in every single video and it's kind of boring. So I'm just going to sand it, fill it, and prime it in a super quick compilation. So I used a white base coat and graphite rub to create a nice reflective silvery effect. This process was simply two layers of clear coat and three layers of graphite rub alternating between the two. I ended up using Tester's Red Enamel Paint for the star and some simple watered down black acrylic for a weathering black wash. So I have the finish completed on all of the 3D printed parts, but I still have to put everything together. There's a couple magnet slots built into some of the parts. Really, you've got to come up with a creative way to get everything to stay in place. So here's what I'm thinking for putting things together. Just a couple magnets and super glue for the forearm pieces. I'm gonna try to use this thin elastic for all of the finger pieces and avoid using a glove underneath. We'll see how that goes. I also think I'm gonna use some Velcro for pieces like this where it hinges together. I wanna add something on this side to actually hold it together and I think the Velcro might work. The Velcro is also gonna be helpful for the areas where I remove the magnet slots because I don't really think these magnets are gonna cut it for holding this piece in place. And finally, I'm gonna use some foam. The foam is going to be really useful for keeping the pieces in place on my arm. finished product. It'd be cooler if it was flexible in one piece, but maybe that's a project for next time. Thanks for watching.